the vibes out of Charlotte are pretty good around Steve Wilkes. He was elevated to interim head coach after they fired Matt Rule in week five. And it looks like some of the bigger names that people have been obsessing over this offseason are not in the mix for the Carolina Panthers. We're talking about Jim Harbaugh, who I guess, <laughs> like a salesman, cold called David Tepper, be like, so. These encyclopedias would really come in handy <laughs> during the end of the semester and for your science project. It's like, I feel bad for the guys when I go to Costco and I'm just trying to get re upped on some things like milk and whatever. And the guys working the the wireless carriers, like, hey, 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 who's your wireless carrier? And I'm like, man, buddy, I got to get in and out, man. I'm sorry. So that was Jim Harbaugh with David Tepper, apparently. Um, and Sean Payton, I think you and I both agree, the asking price and where Payton could land might be too much uh, for David Tepper. Plus, there's the whole NFC South thing. So th- given the big names off the board, so to speak, it, it makes sense that Steve Wilkes should be the front runner for this job, right? After they just completed a six and six run with him as head coach, you know what Matt Rule was never able to do in two full seasons with the Carolina Panthers? Get to six wins. <laughs> <laughs> so cool. and he did it with a worse team. Now I will say, if I'm David Tepper, I am impressed as anybody would be with what Steve Wilkes did. Sure. However, you and I both know people. Are you a good scrambler? Hmm. Or are you a good planner? Yeah. Can you build something? Can, is What is your ceiling? Right? Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, man, you went out there. We got rid of McCaffrey. We, we had a quarterback roulette, and you made us competitive in half of our games. Do you know what? Six and six or a 500 record? You can't do it anymore with 17 games. But sure. do you know what that gets you? A whole bag of jack squat. Mm-hmm. So it's better than what Matt Rule did, but that can't be the standard. Matt Rule being awful can't be the standard. That doesn't mean Steve Wilkes doesn't deserve a chance. Sure. I would I would sit down. They're sitting down with him today to go through the player exits, right? Mm-hmm. Tomorrow. And tomorrow they're going to interview him. So I would listen to what he has to say tomorrow. And I, what I want specifically to hear is, who is going to be the person who calls the plays? Do you know this person? Do you trust this person with your livelihood? Mm-hmm. And what do you think we can do at quarterback? Show me the, the four quarterbacks in this class that you like. Show me the ones in the next class coming up next year. Uh, there's one from Charlotte that you might say, hey, you know what? We did a really smart thing this year. We took KK Aquano. We're now set at one tackle position. Mm-hmm. You might say, hey, you might not like it, but we might be able to get through next year with one of these quarterbacks on hand or or there's going to be a lot of turnover at quarterback in the NFL this there year. There is, there is. So you could even say, "Hey, we're 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 not in a position to to fix that this year." But let me tell you, we can. There's a guy. I, there's a guy from Charlotte who might be able to help us a whole lot. No, total agreement with you. Here's Steve Wilkes uh, from one his exit interview today, uh, not elaborating on the interview that is supposed to take place on Tuesday. One thing, David, you you'll find some consistency with me. And that is, is that uh, I'm not going to express on anything beyond today uh, and really with the exit meeting with these players as we move forward. Um, So uh, I'm just going to keep that private. So there wasn't a lot of elaboration from Wilkes or even Scott Fritterer. I'm sorry, I always add an extra R there. Scott Fritterer, uh, the GM of the Carolina Panthers, he was asked about what they were looking for, what they were actually looking for in their next head coach. We'll know when we get to that person, but there, there, there are some really good candidates this year. We just have to make sure we keep an open mind going into this, that we're not like just locked in on one guy, two guys, three guys, because that happens to be a tendency. And so we have to keep always reminding ourselves, keep an open mind, give everybody a chance to come in, opportunity to learn, We'll know when the right person's in front of us. That's Scott Fitterer, the general manager of the Carolina Panthers. He said, keep an open mind. I totally understand where they're coming from on that, but that also applies to keeping an open mind for somebody like Steve Wilkes. Okay? I mean, I definitely wouldn't hire another defensive coordinator, but I, I if, they, if there is someone in the NFL right now, mm-hmm. as we're looking at Miami, and I know what Miami's record was this year. There's some extenuating circumstances there. There are. But when you look at what a Mike McDaniel, who no one had heard of mm-hmm. before the, the Dolphins had hired him, like no one. He didn't even call the plays, by the way, for the 49ers he, he because like a- Kyle Shanahan calls the plays for the 49ers. Yeah. So what I'm getting at is if you think you have the answer at 
if you're Steve Wilkes and say, I can hire mm-hmm. the next Mike McDaniel and he wants to work for me, awesome. But if you're David Tepper and you know you can hire the next Mike McDaniel, well, guess what? I'm sorry, Steve Wilkes, and it's awesome that you motiv- motivated the fan base here and motivated the players. That's cool, but I, the quarterback position and the person who calls the plays are the two most important things mm. in football. And even when you might get the quarterback position right, that doesn't necessarily mean you're going to do anything with that quarterback. Okay, I mean because you can you can only, only one team push, can win every year. I'm going to push back on the Mike McDaniel thing because I don't even know what Mike McDaniel is yet. Okay, all right, because before the Tua injury, which I think actually was in a weird, I think it's going to sound weird. It's the best thing that could have happened to Mike McDaniel because before the injury, there was some question as to whether or not. Mike McDaniel was going down the, oh, you're the hot shot wonderkin who's got this offensive system that after five, six, seven weeks, we can now understand what you're trying to do. How do you scramble from there? And also with head coach, it gets back to your point. You might not hire the Mike McDaniel, but who's to say you can't hire the offensive coordinator that's the next up and coming guy that can help change your stuff around? Okay. Yeah. And Steve Wilkes. I'm can just using Mike McDaniel things. as an example of someone I had well, never heard of. And this is where the open mind comes yeah. into play, right? You want to keep an open mind that ideally that means, oh, we're, we're going to think of all these people. But for every example of the unknown guy that might be successful, I can give you an example of an unknown guy who bursts into flames, like, hi, Nathaniel Hackett. Sure with the Denver Broncos, or these out-of-left-field offensive gurus that you're thinking are going to change the game end up being Cliff Kingsbury, who didn't really do much of anything, and he just got fired today. So when they say open mind, that also means you should keep an open mind for a guy who's been in the league for a long time, and Steve Wilkes, and keep an open mind about his time in Arizona when he was the head coach for a year. You can look at the league and how they handle black coaches where they don't get a chance. Just look at what the Houston Texans have done, where they fired two black coaches in two years, all right? Cully and then now uh, Lovey Smith. That's an unserious franchise, just in the same way that I could make the point that Arizona is an unserious franchise that I think in their existence, they've never had a coach last longer than six years. They're constantly cycling through people. So this is the question that Dave Tupper has to ask himself. Do you want to be serious or do you want to be unserious? And there's one thing that Steve Wilkes did in this short amount of time that I think has to weigh the conversation. The Carolina Panthers went from a joke to be taken seriously. The Carolina Panthers went from something that you could easily just not pay attention to because Matt Rule was terrible and David Tepper was doing who knows what to Wilkes having your attention, having the players' attention, bringing respectability back to the Carolina Panthers. They look like a serious football franchise again. So maybe... We should see what Wilkes can do. To your point about some scramble, some plan. As somebody who's a scrambler, I know exactly where you're coming from. But I would make the argument, we don't know what Wilkes is yet because he hasn't been given the opportunity. I do think there's more data points to Wilkes that you can point to to say, I believe that he'll be more successful than somebody I've never heard from. So these are just things to take into consideration. Uh, for the Carolina Panthers going forward. Panthers have the ninth pick in the draft, by the way, and there's at least four teams in front of them yeah. who would, who need a quarterback. So this might not be the year that they draft their franchise quarterback. Don't be surprised if they make another play in free agency. And I know Derek Carr is going to be a hot commodity. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Ryan Tannehill, there's going to be a lot of guys out there who you're like, you might kind of give it the old eyebrow raise. Uh, uh, but... That might be the situation that they're in again. Tell you this, it ain't going to be Sam Darnold. You want to go with another bridge quarterback? That's fine, but it ain't no. Sam Darnold. It's just know. not. Sam Darnold, it's five turnovers in the last two yeah. games. He had a passer rating of 2.8, which I think was tied for third worst in franchise history. I know that in the, the, uh, the Tampa Bay game, not all of those turnovers were on Sam Darnold. The interception was and one of the fumbles was. And then, essentially, when you see a coaching staff actively work around their quarterback to yeah. try to win a game, that tells you everything you need to know. We are there. Are going to be way too many options out there. Although, yes. unlike the last two years, there will be a lot of op- options at quarterback. 